Hello everyone, this is Heidi, and this is the first episode of the Frequency Freaks news segment where I discuss upcoming modular and synth releases. And as we are checking out these new devices, I also want to look into some of the history and developments in music technology that led up to this new gear. So I hope you'll enjoy what this segment offers. I'll also share a list of links in the Frequency Freaks Discord space for those who want to further look up the information that's mentioned in this video. 2021 is turning out to be quite a promising year for granular processing modules. Of course, the main exciting news of the last few weeks has been the release of Mutable Instruments Beat, which is the long-anticipated update of the immensely popular Clouds module. And I'm sure by now most of you either have one or have watched a number of videos about it. Besides the beat, there are a few other new granular slash sampling modules on the horizon that's worth mentioning. Expert Sleepers just announced a granular processing algorithm for the Disting EX. Mordax's GXN granular processing module has been rumored for a while and is gaining a bit of momentum again. A new company called Miso Modular has been teasing a couple of new modules, one being a dual looper called the Bicycle, and the other one a granular sampler called the Cornflakes. There's also been a few recent updates of older sampler modules, like the new version of the Sample Slicer from Ginkgo Synthes, and a new version of the G0 from Mungo Enterprises. Last but not least, Industrial Music Electronics has been teasing a granular processing module called Volkmeyer's Inferno, and there's finally a bit of an audio demo on the company's SoundCloud a couple of months ago, which sounds pretty intriguing. Today, what I chose to focus on is what I think is a really exciting upcoming release, which is the ADAC Systems 112, a two-panel, 45 HP device that they have named Voltage Controlled Looper and Granular Sampling Machine. It's scheduled to ship at the end of March, but they have made a user guide available for those who want to get a sense of its main features, which we'll get into more detail shortly. For those who aren't familiar with granular synthesis, in very, very simple terms, it is a digital synthesis technique where pieces or grains, usually very, very small portions of a sound file, are being played back at the same time according to different programmable parameters such as grain size, volume envelope, pitch, and perhaps grain location or the point at which the audio grain is being extracted from the captured audio file. Your audio source can be anything from a synthesizer tone, a radio stream, or a physical instrument such as a frame drum or a flute or a banjo. There are plenty of granular processing tools in both the software and hardware domain, and we won't go too deeply into the list of Eurorack modules right now, but if you're interested, I highly recommend Martin Duderoff's comparison list of Eurorack samplers and sample playback modules. Going back to the ADAC 112, I was initially drawn to it because of its physical design. Now, I'm not normally attracted to huge modules because I don't have a large system, but I really like ADAC's bold decision to make this a very hands-on tool, and that appeals to me. Now, one of the specs that a lot of folks have been talking about is the buffer size range on the 112. Usually, granular processors are meant to capture very, very small portions of incoming audio, but the 112 adds the possibility of long buffer sizes of up to five minutes. And to quote from the user guide, it allows softer approaches to the granular principle, using it as an effect that can generate from accidental effects like slight stutters to extreme processing and transformation of any incoming audio signal. In terms of its audio specs, the module records at 16-bit 
44.1 kilohertz resolution and files are saved onto an SD card. Up to 99 loops can be saved to a preset and up to 99 presets can be saved to a bank. Now let's take a look at the main functional blocks of the 112. The module is divided into three main sections, the looper engine, the granular engine, and the mixing section. The looper engine is kind of the top level control section for recording audio into the buffer and contains other looper functions, including a basic transport panel. It also includes switches for overdubbing and punching in, which to me is very promising because I do notice a few of the popular Eurorack samplers and loopers uh, do not allow overdubbing. The next functional block is the granular engine. ADAC has thoughtfully designed the panels so that the arrangement of the control knobs appear in the same configuration on the I.O. module. Within this section, we also see trimmers labeled deviation, which is the module's built-in randomizer. So each trimmer attenuates the amount or the spread of randomization for a particular parameter. The third functional block on the 112 is the mixing section. And on the I.O. panel, we can find both Eurorack and line level inputs, an input gain knob, and both stereo and mono outputs. On the control panel, there is independent volume control for the dry signal, the loop, the grain engine, and there's a grains feedback level for controlling how much of the grains are fed back into the looper input. And taking a little closer look at the I.O. panel, there is pretty much an input for every panel control, including the looper transport section, which means that recording and playback can all be automated using gates or trigger inputs. There are also loop and grain trigger outputs, which seems to indicate that a trigger is sent out at the beginning of each loop and perhaps at the firing of each grain. So you can potentially clock your whole system using audio material in the 112. Last but not least, we see a screen on the control module. And from the available information at this point, it seems that the screen is mainly used for accessing the menu of banks and presets that the loops are saved in. It also looks like there might be some visual representation of the grain location and what parts of the loops are being played back. As mentioned earlier, part of this video segment is to look back at some of the developments in music technology that led to something like the ADEC 112. And this is definitely not meant to be a comprehensive history lesson, but I learn a lot from researching for this video, and hopefully some of the ideas and people mentioned here can spark interest for further reading and musical explorations. The term granular synthesis can be traced back to Curtis Rhodes, who first introduced the concept in a computer music journal article in 1988, and most notably in his 2001 book, Microsound. But Curtis Rhodes attributed his inspiration for granular synthesis from the famous composer Yanis Zanakis, while he was a student at Indiana University and took a workshop with the composer. Although Zanakis first demonstrated the idea of granular synthesis as early as 1959 in his composition Analogic B, by splicing and recombining tiny pieces of tape, he also pioneered the application of set theory and stochastic processes to composition, and viewing the computer as a tool with its own set of operations for sound that do not need to be tied to acoustic parameters or simply modeling existing sounds. Many of Zanakis' ideas were adopted by Curtis Rhodes, which evolved into granular synthesis as we know it today. In the book Microsound, Rhodes talks about the idea of seeing musical events along a system of time scales, from infinitely long sounds down to the micro domain of milliseconds, samples, and even subsamples. There is an interesting Canadian connection in the history of granular synthesis. It was composer Barry Tro who pioneered real time granular synthesis with his program in his POTX computer music system in 1986, 
when we think about granular synthesis today, we don't really think twice about real-time processing, uh, whether we're using a module or a plug-in or a hardware synth, because microprocessor technologies today just allows us to do that. But back in the 80s, granular synthesis had to be done non-real-time because it just took very long for computers to calculate in this micro domain of sound. DMX1000 is a digital signal processor that was microprogrammable. And in those days, it wasn't possible to go into this level of micro domain of sound, microsound as it's sometimes called, except in non-real time with lots of detailed calculations, lengthy calculations, that is to say. So the DMX1000 being programmable meant that I could implement this method of synthesis by going to smaller and smaller units called grains and produce hundreds of thousands of them per second because there were no granular synthesizers that were out there. It had to be done in software. Since the introduction of granular synthesis and the concept of microsound by Curtis Rhodes, there has been many further applications of the idea of working with sound particles. Today, granular synthesis can be seen as a branch of what's called particle synthesis, which deals with different ways of working with microsonic content. So you may have come across other terms in software and hardware, such as glisson synthesis, trainlet synthesis, pulsar synthesis, and formant synthesis. In the Eurorack format, some of the early sampling granular modules include the very unique Dopfer A112 wavetable sampler, the Industrial Music Electric's Time Safari, and the Make Noise Phonogene. And a little bit later on, we have the Make Noise Morphogene and the Qubit Nebula. Of course, over the last few years, more and more modules with deeper sampling and granular features have allowed modular users to work with really complex audio material and ways of audio manipulation, like the orthogonal devices ER301, the ROSM Assimilator, ALM Squit Sample, the Instro R-Bar, and the 1010 Music Bitbox. And I think the ADAC 112 makes a really unique addition to what's already out there, and that it should be especially appealing to those such as myself who are interested in a more performative or instrumental approach to live audio processing and sampling.